Hello, this is Jonathan Bukhara for Plio and C++. Have you heard about the ranges in C++? It's been a quite popular topic in the C++ community over the past few years, so let's see what this is all about. In C++, to manipulate collections, we have the STL and its algorithms. They're a fantastic library, but they have at least two issues. The first one is that they force you to pass a begin and an end iterator to represent the collection of things. And the second one is that they are very hard to compose. Let's see how that looks like in code. For this example, I'm going to use onebox.org because it's an online compiler that has the ranges library in it. I'm going to write a piece of code that takes a collection of numbers and filter them on a predicate, say filter on even numbers, and then apply a function on them like multiply by two. So we start with the collection numbers and then we send that through a copy if algorithm. You note that in this algorithm I had to pass two iterators, begin and end of numbers. That's not really natural. I'd have preferred to pass numbers directly because that's what we're talking about. We don't really care about its iterators in such a simple use case. This copies the numbers that are satisfy this predicate of being even and send them out to even numbers through the back inserter. In the second phase, we send those results through the transform algorithm that applies the function times two and send that to result. Let's just run that code. So four and eight, because the, the even numbers are two and four and multiply by two, it's four and eight. The second issue that shows here is that that's a lot of code to say not that much. See, you can't compose algorithm the way you can compose function. You have to have an intermediary result and that's, that's a problem. So as you can see, the SCL makes it hard to compose algorithms and clutters the code with iterators when we actually mean to talk in terms of collections. Let's see how the ranges solve these two problems. What's the ranges library exactly? It's a library you can find on GitHub, on the GitHub of Eric Nibbler, which is its author. It's a fairly large library that includes quite a lot of components and we're going to see a couple of them. Going back to our previous example, let's see how we can fix the two problems of iterators showing all over the place and the difficulty of composing algorithms. The concept behind the ranges library is the concept of being a range. Saying that something is a range is essentially saying that it can be iterated over, which means that it has a begin, it has an end, and they both return something that behaves essentially like an iterator. It's a vague definition, but there are a lot of things that fit into that definition, and one of them is the STL containers, like std vector, for example. The ranges library allows quite a lot of things, and one of them is plugging view adapters over ranges. Let's just see an example. Here, I've created this thing, which is the result of taking the range numbers and plugging a range view filter over it. This is a range view adapter and it's going to stick onto the numbers range and it's going to change the way it iterates. More precisely, this expression is also a range, which means that it has a begin and end and you can iterate over it, except that it, when you iterate over it, it's going to skip the numbers that don't satisfy this predicate. So here, even numbers is a range which has only even numbers. Actually, the whole thing is lazy. This is just a small component that's a view over the range it, it's plugged onto. When you iterate over this thing, it's going to actually go into numbers every time, but skip the numbers that don't satisfy the predicate. We can plug as many view adapters as we like. For example, let me plug a transform adapter with a function that multiplies a number by two. All right, so this is now the result of my previous operation. It's arranged. 
of numbers that have been filtered on this predicate and then have been applied that function. Let's now see what's inside this range. And we have the same result as before, 4 and 8. When you observe that code, you don't have any trace of iterators because we are talking in terms of ranges, which are a level of abstraction above the iterators. They are implemented in terms of iterators, but they, they don't show in this interface. Also, you can see how easy it is to compose the equivalent of algorithms in the ranges library with just this operator. So in this regard, the ranges library solved the two problems we saw in the STL. Now, where can you experiment with ranges? Well, one place we've just seen is using one box, but you've got other popular websites that make ranges available. One of them is Godbolt, which is a famous online compiler that lets you see the generated assembly code from a, from a piece of C++ code. And that there you can use ranges. Also, there is quickbench.com, which is a quite popular website to perform micro benchmarks, and it has ranges as well. So you can experiment with them and see how they compare in terms of performance with other types of code. There are actually two main things in this library. One of them is the concept of a range to replace iterators, and this should be added in C20, as I understand. And the second one is using these adapters, and as far as I know, they are not supposed to be in C20. I hope you enjoyed this video talking about ranges. If you want more videos about writing expressive code in C, you can subscribe to the channel, and if you liked it, put a thumb up. Thanks. And I'll see you next time.